Transfer window slam shut to Blackburn Rovers on the long, long road down Plymouth Argyle. We'll talk about that match and the window and more on today's show. Once again, we're going to have a match preview this time, building up to the next cup final, Plymouth Argyle against Blackburn Rovers. Now, before I get into the match, before I get to the transfer specials and all that kind of business, if you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button. I'll keep you back up to date with all things Blackburn Rovers. We're getting to the nitty-gritty part of the season. We are second in the league. Season ended today. We'll be going up, but there's a long way to go. People have to, uh, games in hand and all that kind of business. Anyway, before we talk about the match, we talk about the transfer window. It's slam shut. There's some ins and some outs to bring you up to speed on. We'll talk about the whole window as a whole, but we'll kind of condense it down into just a couple of minutes. Anyway, first, out of the blocks. Yes, it's been a long time coming, but Blackburn Rovers tea lady Elliot Ward has made his way down at MK Dons. Consider this. MK Dons give up Paul Downing in exchange for Elliot Ward. I don't see the logic there. I don't know what they're smoking down at the Milton Keynes, but uh, they get a quality, aging, uh, tea-making Elliot Ward in place of uh, Paul Downing. Uh, that move is to the end of the season. I'm not sure what his contract status is with Blackburn Rovers, but that could be the last time we see him in a Rovers shirt. I think his time is done. Uh, moving forward, let's talk about some of the youngsters. Uh, Scott Wharton, he's off to Lincoln to the end of the season. Uh, uh, for a loan move that gives them some opportunities for first team action and the young academy player Callum Wright is it Callum Wright? he's off to Leicester in a move that's kind of caused some rumblings within the Blackburn Rovers faithful uh, he was hotly tipped to make the, the step up to the first team but uh, he's gonna, if he's going to do it it's going to be on Leicester City's books not with Blackburn Rovers so let's take a look at the transfer window as a whole uh, Paul Downing came in on a permanent deal from MK Dons uh, the fee is undisclosed as for Amari Bell he also came in from Fleetwood Town on a undisclosed transfer probably around about two to five hundred thousand pounds something like that that's just that's just me guessing uh, there we go Callum Wright Connor Thompson both of them uh, leaving Blackburn Rovers both youngsters uh, obviously Leicester City and Connor has probably got his own plans in place. Meanwhile, some of the loans in and out. Jack uh, Payne comes in from Huddersfield Town. He was formerly on Oxford's books earlier in the season. And Adam Armstrong. I've been calling him Alan. So Adam Armstrong also coming in uh, from Newcastle United till the end of the season after players going out. Sam Hart will go to Rochdale. Six-month loan, Ellie Ward, MK Dons, we mentioned him, and Scott Wharton. So three defenders going out on loan. It's a little bit concerning considering the lack of depth we have in defence. Currently, Darren Anahan still out. He's only maybe a couple of weeks away from first team action. Uh, Charlie Mulgrew also out another 10 days or so for him. Uh, and then we're looking right now, we've got Derek Williams playing a little bit out of position as centre-back. Uh, he's partnering alongside Downing. One of those two guys get injured and then we're going to be, we're going to be playing people uh, well out of position to cover those uh, spots. Maybe Caddis can, but it does uh, offer a little bit uh, of lack of cover in that area. But I'm sure we have some youngsters who could come in and that's what I would like to see instead of us playing people at positions. I like to put uh, square pegs in square holes and not square pegs in round holes if you catch my meaning. So what the fans have been saying? Well, they've not been talking about the Plymouth game because that seems to be a bit too close for comfort. They're still talking about the Warsaw game. So I thought we'd do a special on what the fans have been saying about the transfer window. Here we go. Mark Thornley on Facebook said this. Another great transfer window. Downing, Nuttall, Armstrong, Payne and Bell in. Ward out and Lowe is still in Birmingham. There's still rumblings that he might Gate crash, Blackburn Rovers promotion party, but we'll see. Uh, Stuart Franklin said this, got to Callum Wright has left for Leicester. Another very promising player leaves who will probably go on to have a great career away from Ewood. Well, to be honest with you, they're a Premier League side right now. And uh, just like Conor Mahoney, uh, if a Premier League comes sniffing around, offers you the chance to possibly make first team action in the Premier League, yeah, it's going to be stupid enough for them to, to say no. So uh, I can see why he's done it. Uh, yes, uh, the lack of loyalty is 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 a problem within football these days you're not going to get many players who are going to say no to that uh fortunately the likes of charlie Mulgrew, bradley dack richard smallwood despite their successful start to their career at blackburn rovers they have they may have been tempted to jump ship and go for a uh, a different uh, maybe a step up in the championship or even the premier league but 
for for good intentions they've they've stuck to their guns and, uh, and yeah it would, it would be nice to see some youngsters do that but the offer of Premier League football at such an early age I'm not saying he's going to go straight to the first team but he's going to be knocking on the door in a couple of seasons whereas we could be in a couple of seasons knocking on the door of still championship football so I could see why he's done it anyway we kept Mulgrew we kept Brandy Dag we're back on Rovers we're on our way back that was Andy Woods on Facebook meanwhile Stuart Owens said this two good transfer windows we've Kept hold of our best players, onwards and upwards, now to the championship, but hopefully have another good chance for winner in the summer. Armstrong and Chapman are first targets. Meanwhile, James Andretti said this, I actually think we are so lucky to have Mowbray. He's developed our club in all areas, almost on his own. He's done his own work on every team, and his attention to detail is amazing. He updates us fans and appreciates us our support his signings have been stunning forget the transfer window our best signing of the last seven years is tony mowbray wow that's a that's a that's a pat on the back for you gaffer uh, and you deserve it obviously right now we're in second uh still not job job complete if and if he fails to get us promoted i'm sure people will be straight on his back i know i will be because we don't belong in this division i'm hoping mowbray has the balls and the nous to finish a job which is only uh, about 45% complete. He needs, still needs to get uh, in second place on his own merit because right now, Shrewsbury have a game in hand and technically that counts uh, for something. Uh, but yes, anyway, let's talk a bit more about the match coming up up against Plymouth Argyle. Let's take a look at the match itself. Uh, kicks off Saturday, 3rd of February, 2018. Last season, Plymouth finished second in League Two. The current top goal scorer is Graham Carey with nine goals. And the man pulling the strings is Derek Adams. The match is obviously taking place at home park. Would you believe it? Over the years, Blackburn Rovers and Plymouth Argyle have played each other 49 times. Blackburn Rovers winning 19, Plymouth Argyle winning 19, and they've drawn 11 between them including the last time these two guys met each other, which was at Ewood Park earlier in the season. It finished as a draw, a bit of a, a bit of a shambolic draw as well. It was one of those days that we did have our shooting boots on, and that Ben Gladwin miss, still in my head, uh, and I ain't going to get out of it until maybe we can right some wrongs at Home Park this Saturday. Meanwhile, last five appearances between Plymouth Argyle and Blackburn Rovers at Home Park look like this. Rovers have only won one at the past five and that was the last time they met which was back in 1992 3-1 winners in the old division two before that 20th of april 1991 plymouth argyle spanked blackburn rovers 4-1 uh back in 1989 the third one down uh, plymouth argyle and blackburn rovers drew 2-2 before that blackburn rovers lost 4-3 to plymouth and right at the top of the shop 1988 plymouth argyle three blackburn rovers nil Moving over to the starting eleven, this is how I feel Plymouth will start the match. Matthew Lindolf, Reckles, Songo, Bradley, Sawyer, Ness, Fox, Satrovich, Kerry, Taylor, and Lamirez. Let's take a look at the statistics. Like I said at the top of the shop, Kerry has nine goals, Jervis has got four, Edwards has got four, and Grant has got three. Big shout out to Edwards currently uh, battling cancer at the moment. So thoughts and prayers are with him and his family at the moment. Meanwhile, Kerry has seven yellows. The man, the chief, Edwards has got five yellows, Mills has got four, and Ness has got four. And top of the shop, Edwards, obviously former Blackburn Rovers, here he is uh, in the jersey. But yeah, much, much respect to Edwards, hopefully he can bounce back against cancer. But he did have two reds earlier on in the season, one red for Miller, one red for Carey, and one red for Satrovich. Just take a look at the last five games, Plymouth are doing the business at the moment, they've turned their ship around, no pun intended. Uh, and they started last time out, 27th of January, they won 2-1 at Oldham. Before that, they lost to leaders, Wigan 3-1 at Home Farm. Hopefully, we can do a number of them on them ourselves. Before that, Saturday, 30th of January, 1-1 draw away to Doncaster. Before that, 6th of January, 3-0 winners over Berry, And right at the bottom there on New Year's Day, 1-0 winners over Walsall. That puts them right now in 13th place, a win. And they'll be in the top 10. As for Blackburn Rovers, this is how I feel. They will start the match against Plymouth. Ryer in goal, Naimbi Downing, Williams and Bell. Payne, Bennett, Smallwood and Dak. Armstrong and Graham. I, I say that, but it is a very attacking lineup. Just it is actually this starting 11 that did feature the last match. I don't, I'm a little bit weary that maybe Mowbray will be a little bit less ballsy this time out away from home at a, against a team who are on form at the moment so i'll probably be a little less ballsy maybe armstrong um i don't know i think i think i think i just think there's going to be uh it'll be less less guns blazing maybe 
maybe saving Armstrong and Payne for the second half. And maybe the likes of Conway and Samuel coming back in. Uh, well, who, who knows? Uh, but we'll have to wait and see on Saturday. Let's take a look at the statistics. Here he is, the man, the myth, the legend. Bradley Dak tops the goal-scoring charts with 13 goals right on his tail. Big DG with 12 goals. Charlie Morgan is slacking now with 11 goals, but he's injured. He'll be back. And Dominic Samuel's there with eight. As for the discipline, Samuel's there with nine. Yellis Bennett's there with six. Williams has got six. And Evans has got five. As for the Reds, Bennett's got two. Uh-oh, Samuel's got one. And Scott Wharton now off to play his football. Uh, Lincoln has got one. As for the form book, it looks like this. It's looking a little rosier now. Last five games. Uh, including last time out, 3-1 winners over Walsall before that, a 1-1 draw, sloppy 1-1 draw at home to Northampton Town before that, a difficult away win at Fleetwood Town, and once again, January 13th, 3-1 winners over third place Shrewsbury, I'm going to say that again, 3-1 winners over third place Shrewsbury, obviously they uh, have a chance to go back to second, and all the way back on 6th of January, we lost in the FA Cup, to championship hole 1-0 when we did play a weekend side so uh yeah not, not too bothered about that one anyway what's going on around the grounds these are the matches we'll keep an eye on this weekend let's take a look at c wigan they take on gillingham who are mid-table so they might have turned their ship around they might make playoffs who what about shrewsbury who have they got i'm um, looking i'm looking i'm looking and cannot see them i cannot see Shrew there they are shrewsbury Away tie against Bristol Rovers, again, mid-table team. So all of us, Shrewsbury, Wigan and Rovers, taking on mid-table teams who have probably turned their, turned their seasons around. Uh, other matches to keep an eye on. Uh, Scunthorpe, they've been selling a lot of their key players this past few weeks. They take on Fleetwood Town in a difficult match. Also Bradford City. They take on Oldham who are struggling at the moment. But so are Bradford. They've dropped a few points recently. And let's take a look at Rotherham. They take on AFC Wimbledon who are in 16th place. Now over the years a number of players have played for both Plymouth Argyle and Blackburn Rovers. Here are a few of them. First out of the blocks, Alan Judge. That's right, formerly of Plymouth and formerly of Rovers. Never really got the chance to show himself in a Blackburn Rovers shirt. Uh, I think he had more luck with uh, the Argyle. As for this fella, Matt Derbyshire. That's right, he did play for Plymouth and he did play for Rovers. Obviously more known for his time at Rovers, but he did play for, for, for Plymouth Argyle. And this is the only picture I could find of him in a Plymouth Argyle shirt. And would you believe it, it's up against them scumbags down the road. Burnley, and he's given it what for against the number seven back then. That's when Burnley was shit. My, I wish they were still shit. Anyway, moving forward, and this guy, spelling mistake, Jordan Slew. Everyone's favourite Steve Keane signing, Jordan Slew. Uh, play for Blackburn Rovers once or twice. Yep. Don't really rate him whatsoever. And he also played for Plymouth Argyle. I think they must have had better luck with him, but he was just one of them wage leeches that uh, Steve Keane brought in in his fruitful era now you've heard a little bit what i've had to say about the match but none of that really matters what really matters is what cast the cat thinks will happen this weekend between plymouth argyle and blackburn rovers All I've got for you today, folks, it's a bit of whirlwind week. Obviously, we picked up the three points against Walsall. The transfer window has slammed shut. Bradley Dack, Charlie Mulgrew, Richard Smallwood, and all the good players are still Blackburn Rovers. Elliot Ward is on the road down to the MK Dons. He's still on his way down there now. I think he's taking the scenic route. Uh, but yeah, job done. Good bit of business by Tony Mowbray. He's brought in some quality players on loan. Very attacking uh, uh, options in Armstrong, Payne. And uh, keeping uh, and bringing in uh, Downing on a permanent transfer. A lot of people still not, still not won over by Downing, but I think he's, he's I think he's definitely an improvement on Elliot Ward, and he's a decent centre back, young, and uh, we definitely got the better deal than, uh, than what MK Dons did. Um, 
Before I go, I want a big shout out to the guys at the BRFC Forum. If you haven't checked out their forum, make sure you do so. There's a link in my description below. It's a great chance for you to chat with fellow Rovers fans from down the road and around the globe. Also, I'm on Twitter and Facebook if you want to check me out on those social media platforms. Links for those are uh, in the description below. If you've enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. But if you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button. I'll keep you bang out to date with all things Blackburn Rovers. So I best be off now, enough jibber jabber. Let's hope this long road trip for Blackburn Rovers returns with three points. So the next time you hear from me will be shortly after the final whistle after the match against Plymouth Argonne. Until next time, thumbs up, subscribe, ciao for now. Thanks again for watching. Please like, share, and most importantly, hit that subscribe button. It'll keep you bang up to date with all things Blackburn Rovers. But if you want to check out something completely different, head over to my other YouTube channel. You do that by pressing the button right there. If you want to check me out on Twitter, Facebook, details are in the description below. So until next time, thumbs up, subscribe, ciao for now.